Hi and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the Deck Server 900TM, which is this device here. There's another one here. Uh, this is a standard terminal server. This one has 32 ports on it, so you can have a lot of terminals connected into this one. Very similar to the Deck Server 200 that I featured a while back but it was only an 8 port module and it used uh, DB25 connectors and had full modem control which is why it's called the MC um, this one uses RJ45 and this one being a bit more advanced um, it supports LAT and also TCP IP connectivity so it can boot over TCP IP it can also, um, you can tell net from the terminal into various servers as well. And this is one of a series of modules that is designed to work with a thing called the Deck Hub, which is a large backplane that you can plug various modules into, such as deck ser servers, um, repeaters, switches, uh, modems, all sorts of things. Uh, the Deck Hub was generally a, or an eight-slot system where you could plug up to eight of these modules in and as you can see this this is one of the the, the deck server 900 is one of them and it plugs into into the back plane now i don't have a, a deck hub or one of the big ones anyway but there is a way that you can get these things working and that's to use a device called the deck hub one okay so this device is a deck hub one it's just a, a unit that you can plug one module into. Um, all you have on it, on the back, you have your power input, of course. Uh, these are two management ports. They're not used for um, deck servers. They're only used for the repeater and switch modules. Um, around this side, you've got your AUI for your network. And on this side, you've got just the connectors that go into, into the various modules. So if you want to power one module, just for testing or whatever, then this is the way to go. So if you look at the back of the, the deck server, you've got a, a hook there, and another one there, and that will basically plug into there. And then you do up this screw on the back to hold them together. Now, like any terminal server, this one will mop boot over the network, and that's how we're going to set it up. It also has a slot here for a PCMCIA memory card, and you can boot this one off that card. One of the problems with the old deck servers was that you needed a host running in order to boot your terminal servers. Um, in a hobbyist environment that's a bit of a problem because if you've got uh, your console hooked up to the terminal server so that you can get to the console remotely then how do you boot the terminal server when the when the your VMS machine is not running um, in this case it's easy because you can use a card here and boot off the card and not over the network anyway we shall plug it in and try and configure it now, yeah, like any terminal server, um, port 1 is the console port. And I've just used some standard Ethernet cable there, because it's RJ45. And I have an adapter here that I can just plug into the laptop here just to get the console messages. As with most deck servers, uh, the display here will give you diagnostics and show you what's happening during the boot. Takes a while for things to show up on the console, but eventually you'll get some messages. Okay, Dex Server 900 TM, that's the MAC address for the boot, uh, hardware and firmware versions. It's got 4 mega RAM, and now it's trying to boot, looking for this image. Yeah. It's trying a Boot P boot over IP, can't get it, tries this other one, 
Have Ruth in it. And then tries a standard mop boot here. And if it doesn't get anything, it tries again. Now as is standard for any mop booting devices, make sure you've got service enabled here under NCP. And then turn on messages for network and then boot the terminal server and see what it looks for. Now as you can see as the load request come in and it's looking for this file www.eng2.sys and it can't find it. Now I don't have a copy of the official software for this tech server but I through the magic of the internet, I have managed to find a copy of this file which I can copy into that directory and see what happens. Okay, so it's copied in there now. And there's the Dex Server 200 one from the previous video. Anyway, we'll reinitialize the Dex Server and see what happens this time. So there's the load request, looking for that file. And this is saying that the load is successful. So the terminal server has grabbed that file and booted. We'll have a look on the terminal server now, see what it's got to say. Once the terminal server is up and running, you get what they call a racetrack pattern on the display here. So, yep, if you see that, it means everything's running as it should on the terminal server. This is the console port on the terminal server. Um, it's attempted to boot. It's found a host that can supply the file which has got this AA address, which means it's running DECnet. Then requests the load from that host, and the host supplies it, and then the load's complete. And then it says software initialization complete. So now if you return a couple of times, here's your terminal server. Various information, the file is booted off. If you do a show mem command here, it shows you the amount of memory and it also shows you details of the flash RAM, which we haven't got installed. Look at the services. It's seen the VacStation 3100 and now we can just Connect, and away we go. And there you can see the sessions come in, VTA1, which is a flat device and it's coming from the Dex Server 900 on port 1 which is exactly where we're coming in from and there's fairly good help in the system here about all sorts of commands that you can use but not everything's listed unless you have privilege set so by default it just says define Kerr Russell port. Now if you do a set priv, and the default password is system. Then do a help. You can change all sorts of stuff.
because you've now got privileges to do it. So what we want to do is we want to start defining the internet stuff so that we can get Telnet running. So the first thing we need to do is set the mask. the change changes to find and set okay so we reboot it now hopefully telnet will start So ping works. You can also now do telnets. coming in over IP. Okay, so we've now got our terminal server running LAT and TCP IP. Once you're running TCP IP, you can telnet into the terminal server to manage it. So from VMS, if we connect to the system, you'll get a hash. So it wants a password, and the password for this one is access. And now you're managing the terminal server remotely. It keeps putting these X on X off type characters there. I don't know why. I haven't worked out how to turn that off yet. You can also connect via MOP with NCP by using this command. So you connect by your, whatever your, your line is, and the physical address of the ter terminal server. And once again you'll get the the prompt and then you can get in. So you can remotely manage it even if you haven't got two CPIP. This one doesn't seem to do the X on X off stuff, which is good. And control D to get out of that. Now what would be nice to do is to get the memory card working. Now, I don't have an official memory card for this with the software on it, but I did manage to find this memory card. I think it's out of an old HSC or something like that. It's two megabytes. I think the load file is 1.7, so it should fit. as we plug our card in and you do init from ethernet 
update flash ROM. So that'll initialize it from a mop, mop boot on the internet, on the Ethernet, sorry. So what that'll do is it'll initialize it using mop from Ethernet and then write that file onto the flashcard. Flash RAM. Okay, so I'll just cancel that and so delay zero. I can do it now. Loading the file in now. And now it's going to write that image to the flash RAM. And that's now complete. So the next thing to do is to disconnect from the Ethernet and see what happens. Okay, so my Ethernet is disconnected. I'll now put a loop back on the port. Now it's detected the flash RAM card and it's not going to do it over the network. And there we have it. Now I can do a show memory now. You can see the flash RAM says installed, recognises 2 megabytes, valid boot block, that's the boot file, and the size of the file. So now we have the terminal server booting off the memory card without having to mop boot over the network. Just an advantage if you have remote consoles and things hooked up to it. So that's about it for this episode. We've explored the deck server 900 tm through the deck hub one uh, got it to mop boot off the vac station and also off the flash ram card hopefully you found that interesting and we will catch up with you next time